ABI Food Systems is a company that was established about 55 years ago out of Warren, Ohio. Um, we started out as a vending company. Uh, we still do vending today. And Dan is, um, Dan Mundy is his name, and my name is Chris Hawthorne. Uh, I live in Georgetown, Ohio, right across the river. Uh, I'm a district manager for ABI, and I handle the dining aspect of our business. And Dan is a branch manager, and he handles the vending aspect. So in our world, Dan and I together, we are equal, if you will. Um, Dan has a branch of all of his staff that handles all the vending throughout. So Maysville College, um, everything to do with vending falls to him. And then there's a small cafe in the, cap in the college uh, it's like a concession stand, if you will, and that falls to me. Um, I have general managers at each location and the staff that operates at each location. Um, why don't you give Dan's better at this? He's been at it longer. <laughs> he knows. See how I did that? <laughs> what I mean to the old guy. <laughs> Dan, Dan I'll, I'll let Dan tell you more about ABI who we are and where we're from and, and how we got here, where we are today. So. And the only reason he says that is I have been with ABI for 22 years. Uh, I came to ABI through an acquisition. ABI at uh, 22 years ago was a, a vending company that was trying to get on the map. And we have certainly since that time, 22 years, become one of the largest, number six in the world now as a food service company. And I, I use food service rather than vending is because we do food service. All types of food service, any type you can think of, we do it. Whether it's vending, catering, coffee services, fine dining, uh, black tie dinner, whatever it is that a client would, would want, we can do it. No is not on our vocabulary as a company. John K. Aldrich is the founder and owner 86 years old, still works every day of the week. His son is now the CEO and president, Anthony, and they are very passionate about what they do. Obviously, by the size of the company and the way they build it, you can tell that. One of the reasons I've been with them for 22 years is because of the family and the passion they have for food service. I personally grew up learning vending. I did start in a country club in the kitchen learned a little bit about food, it didn't hit my hot dog. For whatever reason, I just didn't, it didn't take off. But, on the other hand, in the food service industry, dealing with people, I told them about I had to do it. I had to please people. Think about it. There's no better way to please people than to feed them. Also, there's no harder way to do it than to feed them. Because you can be a hero or a zero. Very easy. When you feed people. And a lot of times we are. So it's a very, very fine art to find out how to be a hero all the time. And that's what Chris's job and my job is every day. And working with George through the college, uh, which has been a great uh, partner over the years, they help us. As a customer, they tell us what we're doing right, what we're doing wrong, where we need to get better, and where we can. So, the company itself has been very successful over the years, and we've done that in one way. And John K. August, the founder, will tell you that <coughs> it's through people like Chris and myself. You can't build a business without good people, and with passion and love for what they do. And as I look at food service, that's what most people that I see that are in it, that's why they're in it. And that to me is really, really impressive. A lot of people have jobs, they don't like what they're doing. But most people in food service love it, and they continue to do it throughout many, many years. So ABI is a company that started out vending. He started out with nine machines. He actually owned the bar first. And the guy that came into his bar kept uh, getting service calls on his vending machines through the bar. John said, you know what? I'm tired of taking your calls. Let me just take your business. And he started doing it. And then, eventually, he says, you know what, I want to get into the dining. We have currently, right now, a commissary.
necessary to warm the product if we want to clean it. Uh, yet we produce all of our vending food. And this uh, culinary institution is unbelievable. The automation, the technology, and everything. We make homemade soups. We make all of our, now this is vending food. And I know the perception of vending food. Yeah, I get that. I can't compete with what he does <coughs> in the kitchen. I can't do that. But vending food in ABI's world is really first class. It's uh, top of the hard uh, top of the line on the product and how it's produced, how it's packaged, and how it's obviously distributed. <coughs> Extremely impressive. If you were to see that, uh, everything's automated. Uh, we still have 72 employees in the commissary that actually package the product, put the hamburger on the bun, set it down the bottom. <coughs> it's remarkable. And so that's still the, uh, if you will, the family touch that John insisted we do. We, we do it every day. And we take that to our clients every day. So the company got into dining primarily because we got a vending account that one at 90. So we said, well, we can do that, and we did. And now, it's a huge part of our operation. Uh, we do health care, we do hospitals, we feed patients, we do colleges, we do prisons, we do anything you can think of that has food service for it, we do it. And uh, when you think about that, that's pretty impressive. Especially when you think about the different people you have to please Every day. And what the owner of our company and founder doesn't care what we did yesterday. He only cares what we did today. So if the customer was happy with us yesterday and they're unhappy today, he's upset. And we get that. Yep. Don't we? <laughs> we understand that. So having said that about ABI, uh, what we were hoping to do here today a little bit is get some questions about maybe what we do and what the company's done. Or any questions that you might have about anything that we can help with. Like I said, between Chris and I, we've got, what, 70 years of food service experience. Uh, mine's more, like I said, on the vending side, but his is on the dining. I fortunately have had a great experience with ABI learning dining because of the vending. I have many accounts that have dining facilities and vending, so Chris and I can work together with those. I see what he does. He sees what I do. I, I critique him. He critiques me, which is really a healthy. That's the only way we get back. It's really a healthy working relationship. Dan controls the Hebron uh, Kentucky branch. So in his location, you have how many accounts? 135. Total? 135 vending locations. So Maple College is one location. So imagine all those locations that he has under him. In the dining world, I have 10 total, and I have eight of my 10 are under his in his branch. So he and I work closely the majority of the time. A little bit more in detail about in, in the dining world and how it fits into your world. Um, we partner with Cincinnati State College currently. And what we do there is they have a culinary program, and you as and the students, majority of you would have to do an internship, I'm assuming. Uh, what we do with Cincinnati State is, is we place interns in our locations, throughout Cincinnati, throughout any and everywhere. Now granted, Maysville is a, a little far piece away from Cincinnati, and I understand that. Um, one of the differences is we have a branch, a new branch that's opening up in Lexington that will be open by the 12th, 25th of April. So there's dining accounts that are coming on board out of the Lexington branch. So Indiana, Paris, Williamstown, and I don't know what you, where you live in comparison to. I mean, you drive to here, and you might live in Maysville, but I have one location in Amelia, Ohio. Everything else of mine is Northern Kentucky, which is Florence, Hebron, Erlanger, Owenton, um, Covington, in that area. 
and I have one clear across the state of Ohio over in Jackson County, Ohio, which is probably over next to Athens, Ohio. So my background is all food. I started out right out of college with a business degree, not in a culinary standpoint. I grew into Wendy's International, Kentucky Fried Chickens, and fast food. Decided that fast food was not what you want to do, especially when you have children and you're working nights and weekends and everything else. So I read, I left that and went to uh, food and beverage at Ohio University, became the food and beverage director, and I was there for 10 years. So we fed 15,000 students every day, Monday through Sunday. It's a huge college, it was a lot of fun. <clears throat> You get up there and rank and you say it becomes a political job and you get away from what you're doing with food. And for me, it was just, I didn't like that. I was running to Columbus doing state bids, buying food. But that's not my cup of tea. My cup of tea is being in the trenches and seeing it all happen. So I left there and went to other jobs, but I started with ABI about 12 years ago. It's a great company. Um, each of our locations, we in turn talk to our clients and find out what they're searching for as to what they want served in their location. Maybe they want hot entrees, hot sandwiches. Maybe they want caterings, uh, huge big caterings where it's all buffet style. Maybe it's on China. Maybe it's on styrofoam. All different variations. I have managers that are chef managers where they're actually the chef and they do all the cooking, but they also manage the facility. I have some that are general managers that have no cooking really background, but they oversee all the, the dining aspect of it. We have lots and lots of sous chefs. We have lots and lots of chefs, executive chefs. We have pastry chefs. We have the College of Mount St. Joe in Cincinnati. I think it's now called Mount St. Joe University. Um, general manager there is also a chef. Pop it Can't ask anybody better. You might be in a transition. Maybe you've done your internship. Maybe you're looking for experience. Maybe you come on with us part time to test and just to, to play, play in the kitchen. You know, we're going to find a job for you. We're going to find the location for you, wherever you want to be. You, you, you know, you know how far you want to drive. You know where you are in your progression in your culinary career. You know if, you know, if you're graduating, you want to move on. We've got a lot of people that came out of Cincinnati State that are right there at ABI and they're chef managers or they're, we've got a resident director at Fifth Third that runs all of Fifth Third's business, um, the Madisonville Operations Center, downtown Madisonville. Um, right outside of Cincinnati, and he runs four different locations. He's like me, but we call him resident director because they have less responsibility. Um, but that's that's our world. That's who we are. Um, and if you're interested, abifoodsystems.com is there was a website. You can go into careers right on there. There's an application you can download. You can fill it out online. You can send it through. It goes directly to our corporate offices in Warren, Ohio. But because you're basing yourself in Maysville, Kentucky, for example, that would come back to me because they know that I run this area. So and that's you, that you, that you can you can do that. Or I've got tons of business cards here, and my email address is directly on the card. So feel free to pass them out. Um, if you want to contact me, but my number is on there, but Sharon Fetters is the general manager at the Maysville College in the cafeteria. You can go see her. She can put you into contact with me. Because she works for me. Um, I don't. <laughs> so I. Yeah, I, 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 I took all the ones I had out of my book folder. She's got the same email with us. Um, I didn't know how many people were going to be here. But we're hey, very you have the name of the company and how to get a hold of us. <coughs> what we do, um, like for example, I have the DHL facility, and DHL I'm very proud of because 
when I started that facility, um, we we went into that facility with two employees, a two a manager and two employees, and we were going to run a breakfast and a lunch operation. We're now running breakfast, lunch, third shift. We actually prepare meals, bring them back down to a cold state, and then um, we have five different flight companies, Polar Air, Atlas Air, Kalita Air, Southern Air, and ABX Air, and all their pilots and their crew get on these airplanes, and we take the meals to the airplanes, load them into a refrigerator, and that plane flies to Hong Kong, China, Lithuania, Germany, wherever, with all this cargo for DHL, and we load their plane for them. <coughs> Last year, I did $1.1 million in sales just in planes. Oh my God, that's a huge. <coughs> Uh, the cafeteria itself, you know, you think from a cafeteria, and one of the differences which you see in a lot of our cafeterias, we don't sell our food at a retail restaurant price. I was very pleased with your pricing out here in your cafeteria, or out here in the dining facility today. I mean, six seventy-five, you can't get fettuccine alfredo anywhere for six seventy-five. Uh, I understand what you're doing, but in our world, it's, it's the same way. Our clients, a lot of times. George dictates what he wants in the pricing. He wants the pricing to stay relatively low to benefit you all, but also to, he knows it's a business and we have to have a break even, if you will. Um, the DHL, I have two cafeterias there. One operates only on third shift and the other one runs first and third. Um, between both cafeterias, we do $2 million in cafeteria sales. It's very, very busy. 2,400 people. Caterings, you know, we go out on the ramp where the planes are. We set up tables, buffets, and we feed 2,400 people right through the serving line. <laughs> Outside. We prepare everything upstairs that you ride an elevator up to the second floor and cart all that stuff down there. I mean, vending helps us out drastically because I'm ordering cookies through our commissary and I get 2,500 cookies that come from vending that are you see in the machines that have the ABI logo on them. And I just order those cookies from up there. And then we already have the cookies made. I don't have to deal with that at the, at the cafeteria level. But almost every single caterer that we do there is on third shift, not first shift. Right, great guys. Great guys. I have 22 employees there, grew from two to 22. I opened that facility up five years ago, doing 275000 a year, and it's at $3.1 now. Congratulations. And I'm proud of it. And, you know, and, and, and he is the same respect on the vending side. I mean, all the machines that we do there and all the office coffee services that we do, he loads two pallets, pallets now, um, of water, bottled water two pallet loads of water every other day into that facility. <laughs> <clears throat> into a huge refrigerator out on the ramp. You know, that's one. That's just one account. You know, Fifth Third, Duke Energy, AK Steel. Um, um, for me, Meritor, uh, a place called, used to call Millicron. They, they sold out the Cincinnati machine. Now they sold out again to a company called Thieves from um, the Sweden company. Um, Cengage Learning, all these different facilities. And they're all just all over. Cengage Learning packages books and sends them out to colleges. I'm sure you know yeah. those guys. And there's 700 people that work in that warehouse, and all they do is repackage the books and send them out on the seminars. But they eat in our cafeteria. <laughs> So it's a lot of fun. I mean, you got you know you got to have a passion, and, and you guys wouldn't be as far as you are in your in your world if you didn't have a passion for food because you've selected it as a career. But um, we have a lot of great potential jobs out there. If you're interested in coming on board as an intern, or maybe it's part time. At the end of your college, you got your degree. If we have an opening for you, we'll slide you right in, and you become a chef manager at one of our locations. It's, it's <coughs> unlimited. 
Let's say you decide to take off and go to Cleveland. We'll transfer you to a facility in Cleveland because we have places up there. It's just we're in 42 states. So we're big. And also, too, you know, we spoke about. We're down in Georgia, aren't you? We are in Georgia. Um, we took over the entire Orlando healthcare program, 30 hospitals, I believe, in Orlando, Florida. So we have a presence in Florida, and we're coming this way, back this way. Well, That's we say it that way because. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's just it's just really it's a lot of fun. It really is, and you know, you what we encourage our chefs and our chef managers to do is germinate, create. We're not going to give you a book and say, here's, here's your menu. You're going to create your own menu. And you're going to create it from your own experiences and your own desires. You're going to be given a Cisco order guide, and you're going to have free run of that, of that order guide to whatever you, want to, whatever you want to do. And it could be that you know it's an established account that you're moving into, and they're doing entrees, and they're doing sandwiches, and they've got a grill, and they've got a salad bar. All the, but you get to be the one that creates what you want on that salad bar, or you get to be the one that you know creates an action station and, and it's served out on the serving line with active cashiers or active servers doing their thing. It's all of you. But we work together to get that accomplished. And I'm not the culinarian, you know. I'm, I have people out there that I'll pull in to assist you. Because I just, I'm not the culinary. I know the final option, I'm that great was really good, but I don't know how to get it there. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions for us? Do you have any questions that you can add? Don't, don't feel like there's any dumb questions, just go ahead and ask them. I mean, are, are they really flexible? Like, if you have a job, yep. flexing around, that's what job you already have. Most of our facilities, you know, DHL is, a, is, a, is, a, is an exception, but like, like I have Schwann's Food Service um, in Florence, Kentucky. And we go in there Monday morning at 6 a.m. and we leave Friday night at 10 p.m. and we never close. It's a 24 hour operation. Now it's not the types of food that you would see that a culinarian would need it for, to make. Anybody can make some of the stuff that we do there. But we do have the facilities like Fifth Third, for example, most of our facilities operate breakfast and lunch. You're gonna to come to work between 5.30 and 6 a.m. and you're gonna leave between 2.30 and 3 o'clock every day. And it's a Monday through Friday job. But you're still having a line, right? It's still a... It's, it's a cafeteria. Yeah, so I mean, that, I mean, a lot of, like for me, I'm gonna work them on a line, so... On a serving line? Yeah. So well, for the be... most part, if you're a chef manager, you're gonna be the person that's batch cooking in the back of the house to provide the food to the front of the house and managing the people to make sure that they're doing, everybody's doing what they're supposed to be doing. Can you go if you have a training program to accomplish this? Well, <coughs> that's, uh, that's kind of hard in our world because every location is different. We don't have a specified training period for you at this location, we would develop a specified tra training location from all the management aspects of what you would do. But as for what you do as a chef, you're not going to go through a training period, if you will. We're going to expect you to know different things of how to prepare the menu. We'll help you with that, but I'm saying preparing the food, the, the food and the items themselves, you would know that. But every, like I said, every location is different. Where we do, you know, pizza at Maysville College, individual pizzas or something like that, um, we do fine dining at another location where we do entrees, potatoes, vegetables, dinner rolls, drinks. And that's not, a, um, that's not something that we do at the college. But that's why I say everything is different. Now, and not every account requires a chef per se. Sharon is not a chef. Sharon is a great gal that, that knows how to interact with customers and knows how to cook a hamburger and cook 
you know, concessionary types of foods on the serving line or and behind the, the counter there. But that's all. That's what. That's what her role is. Uh, but you know, it's everywhere. It's just whatever location you would be placed in, and we would we would place you where we would need you as a chef. So you're not going to go to an account where the chef's not needed because that's not the goal. Right. The goal is to place you where you can hone your skills, continue to hone your skills, and we'll be watching you and determine, you know, are you the person that takes over the next location that we open down the road? Awesome. Now you said that you're going to have a place in Lexington. Is that going to be where you're going to need a chef or anything like that? As it is right now, I don't, I don't know the specifics. Dan's more detailed into it because he's the branch. Well, we call it a branch because that's the vending world. Mm -hmm. um, and then as accounts come online or, and, and are sold, we have a business development division that goes out and sells these accounts or buys, you know, sells, what do you call it? Sells? Yeah. yeah. They go out and bid on these locations and then as we acquire those locations and as cafeterias come online, we'll need people to go in those locations. I know that they're working on one right now called Xerox. Mm -hmm. And was it four market C's or something like that that they're putting in there? So. Which, to answer your question, as we grow the Lexington market, we will be picking up dining facilities within some of the accounts we bid on. Uh, we can't tell you exactly right now because they haven't, but the, the record and history of ABI is rapid growth. When we come into a market, such as Lexington, we come in fully loaded, and we're going to grow very quickly in that market. And so if there's an opportunity to do a food service, wherever it is, we're going to do it. So we could be opening dining facilities, vending facilities, uh, market seas, which is just an upscale vending program. It's, it actually falls in between a, a dining facility and vending. And a convenience store. Type it's more like a convenience store. This is, brand, this is relatively new in the, in the world. One of the things I wanted to say, Chris and I, what I have is a vending route driver right now that has been with me for a year. Well, when I hired him, we didn't really have an opening in the area that he wanted. But he was more than willing to come in and learn ABI and take over running the vending route. He's been doing it for a year. He has since requested a transfer to one of Chris's accounts, DHL, as a sous chef. Sous chef. We're going to accommodate that. The reason being is he's got 15 years behind him as a country club chef. So he came to the vending side of the world and said, you know, I'm kind of burnt out of being in the, in the working in the kitchens, and I'd like to do what you guys do. And he did it for a year, and he said, you know, I kind of miss the kitchen. I think I can get into the kitchen now. <laughs> so, so now he's coming back to us. So the point where it gets in your blood and, and it's a passion, that's what he's done. He's been, he's a great employee, and we keep great employees. We will find a home for those people. We don't know where. As I told Stan when I hired him, I said, Stan, I don't have anything right now in, the, in your dining room. But if something comes available, and if you're interested, let's talk. And that's exactly where we are today. Yep. That team member. It'll be, I don't think he's been here quite a year yet. But he's coming. He's going to assist in the Lexington opening in the vending world, and he's going to come on board with me on April 26th. So, hope that answers your question. Yeah. Now, you're going to be the one that's over the Lexington? No. No. Uh -huh. no. He is the branch manager in Ebron, oh, okay. and there is a, we do everything in the, we, we have you come through the, the different positions, mm -hmm. and to be a, become a branch manager, you're going to be an operations manager first. Mm -hmm. And he's a current operation manager that's being promoted into a, a branch manager's position. Oh. So my branch out of Hebron actually operates Maysville. I do all of Maysville, Kentucky. Any of the accounts down here, uh, you know, Toyo, C, Jasper, you know, we go with Flemingsburg. Flemingsburg. We, got, we do all the vending. We do Mitsubishi, <coughs> uh, Federal Mobile, and DBNL across the river. We do all the vending. So the reason I'm here is because my area, 
And I think George and I, we've been working together since 1992. 1992. So that makes me pretty old. George is not. I am. So <laughs> we just know that in the long uh, That's why I'm here to just talk a little bit about specifically how we uh, put our branches together. We don't like to get so big that we can't cover them, that we can't cover the area geographically. And that's why we're putting one in Lexington. I can't do it out of here. It's too far. It's too big of a piece. What other questions? Relative to the venue size of the business, I'm thinking machines, that type of venue. Yeah. What sort of percentage of your entire sales is that compared to catering or whatever? Excellent question. And I'm going to tell you just a quick <coughs> uh, it's, it's about 60% right now. But at one time, it was 95%, 96%. The dining world, the healthcare world of our business has really come up. We see each year the vending getting less and less, and the dining getting greater and greater. Uh, so there's definitely a trend. 40% of dining right now is almost unheard of. We never, as a company, ever would have thought it would have done that. We thought vending was still the backbone of food service and everything, and it's changing. And now the market sees it's even changing more. How, how is governmental regulations affecting that relative to labeling of products and stuff? Because over the past couple of years, I've kept hearing things about, well, you know, you're going to have to put, you know, content of this and labeling of that is going to cost the industry so much money. So, yeah, yeah we're we're that that. into a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it will. And we're looking at how we're going to do that in the vending world. The dining world comes live uh, next year, and the vending world comes live in 2017 as far as being, making that law. What we're looking at is on the vending machine, you, you're talking about the nutritional factors right. on the packaging. Right. Uh, that will be probably a screen on the vending machine that will, you'll be able to punch in the number and it'll tell you the nutritional factor. We can't get all that on a package. It's just impossible. That's why I was curious how you were gonna do that. So that's one of the ways we're looking at right now is a little uh, digital screen on the vending machines. The FDA came out with guidelines to us in our, in our world that any menu that we post or any board that's up on a wall has to have the nutritional analysis on every single product. That is not going into play until next year. We as a company are going to put it in play in December of this year uh, in every location. So, for example, I have a core menu board, a menu board that has hamburger, cheeseburger, cheese sticks, pizza, all the things that we serve at the college. And because we, that board would never change unless I make a change in a price. So I'm gonna do a price increase at that location that I've already talked to George about and we've already discussed this. Our company said, well, we wanna put all the nutritional Dallas analysis on those boards. Wait a minute. That means I have a recipe written for every single item that we serve there. And then do it in the amount of time, well, we push that back. So we're going to have it by December, but I'm going to put the boards up without the nutritional analysis right away, and then by December I'll have the nutritional analysis on every single way. Do you envision that being networked into such a system that if you make a change here, that that is automatically transmitted to the other operations around the states, or is that a little too complex? It's, we hope to on the core menu items. But the problem is, is where here we might make a cheeseburger with a four ounce burger, over here we might make a cheeseburger with an eight ounce burger, or a 3.2 ounce burger, or a two ounce burger. It's all over the place. Here, you know, where we make fettuccine Alfredo, this chef makes it one way. Over here, this chef makes it. So we would have to have generalized recipes that every single person is gonna follow exactly to the T. Because otherwise, the nutritional analysis, our analysis is going to be wrong. So the McDonald's type scenario where you go to one McDonald's and another McDonald's. But see, the problem is, is in our world, that don't exist. <laughs> we just don't like, we just don't operate that way. Well, just one other question on some of the other people asked or asked, but relative to the flight service that you're providing, are you talking about passenger in-flight service, or is this for like cargo 
plane. It's just for the pilots and the crew okay. of each plane as they fly off. And as large as we six to ten people. Six to ten people generally per okay. plane. Okay. The difference is is if they're flying to Hong Kong, they're all union pilots, mm -hmm. and that's a fourteen hour flight. So they not only get a breakfast cold and then they heat up into their um, convection ovens, right. they're also gonna get provided lunch. And they're also going to get provided coffee, and they're also going to get provided toilet paper, and they're also going to get, you know, all these different things that they need for that 14-hour flight is all provided by us. Well, why, why haven't you expanded into the passenger service? I mean, I, I, I see you live here. So. Um, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. I, it, it takes a lot from our side of the world to take care of flight catering because we're on call pretty much 24-7. A flight, something that we're doing right now with Atlas Air is they came up with the idea that their planes break down throughout the United States somewhere. And rather than to have that plane fixed at that location, they want to dispatch another plane from CBG and send that empty plane down to that location, offload the cargo and let it go on. So it doesn't delay the, the cargo that's, that's being delivered. So they're telling us that they want a they want meals for a plane ready in 45 minutes from the time that they notify us to the time they do, we deliver them on the plane. Well, we operate from nine o'clock at night through third shift till six a.m. and then till two thirty in the afternoon. So about four o'clock in the afternoon, there's nobody in the facility from four o'clock in the afternoon until nine o'clock at night. So now we have to have somebody there. And if we don't have a flight that goes out, then all that labor that we spend, well, so we're billing them for that labor, whether the plane goes or it doesn't go. So we've had five consecutive straight nights of no hot spares, no emergency flights off to go anywhere. So they're gonna get billed for five, you know, eight hours of somebody sitting there they didn't, you know, they're they're in production, but they're not actually delivering a, a meal to a plane. Your actual facility itself is off site, it's not on the airport property. It's on the airport property. It is right, right in the kitchen. Okay. We do everything in one location. Back of the house is where we prepare. I mean, all the kitchen, the, the chef, the day shift chef prepares the meals in the daytime. We cool them back down. We put them in these little containers specifically for an airplane. They go into a refrigerator, and then that night they're pulled out, put into bins, and then taken to the plane. Do the pilots special order of meals, or do you just we provide them? To come in we there. provide them a three-week rotating menu cycle. And right now we're serving salmon fillet, sirloin steaks, lobster tails, shrimp. They're getting top-of-the-line foods, top-of-the-line charges too, <laughs> but that's all part of it. But they're happy, right. you know. They they're the ones that kind of spell it out to us as to what they want. We just provide. But it's very coordinated effect. That's one <laughs> facility that it, it can get. I mean, you don't have the right staff in there, you can really have problems. With delivery drivers that have to load to ten to fifteen airlines per night, you know, that's a lot of work. Well, I was just kind of curious because when you first mentioned that, I was thinking. There's a company called Gate Gourmet and yeah. CBG that provides flight service, um, in-flight service for passengers. I don't know, maybe we'll get there. Ha, who knows? No one's approached us yet to ask for it, so when they do, I'm sure we will. When, you know, UPS went off a bit down in Louisville, and um, 10 times the size of what DHO is from the amount of flights that go out, 75 flights a night flying all over the world. And we bid on that in that location. They didn't award it to us for whatever reason. I don't know. I did the bid specs on it and put it together, but and then it's handled by another division when they actually award it. Um, but it, it was a huge piece of business. How many airports are you actually on, physically on? I mean, is CBG not the only one I see? I'm, from, from my district, okay. CBG is the only one that I have. 
There could be other ones throughout the company, but I don't know which ones which ones they are. <coughs> we we operate a region, and we uh, Dan and I both answer up to a regional director, and it's the same guy, and he runs he operates vending and dining, and um, he operates all of Cincinnati and the Hebron branch, and then now Louisville because we have a branch in Louisville, and he'll be having Lexington now. So that's his encompass area. He answers up to a regional vice president, and we have four of those in the company. The regional vice president answers directly to the COO, and the COO answers directly to the president. So that's just the correlation. When we have business calls to discuss whatever, we're discussing it right with the president or with the COO almost every, every call. So it's just that there's not a whole lineage of people <coughs> that we you know, it's from the top to the bottom, it's like seven people in line. And we're not saying I'm at the bottom, but it's, we have the responsibility of the field. I was, I was just kind of curious to know whether you did anything for it, whether you had foreign operations, you know, whether you had anything South America, Central America, whatever, Canada. We, we don't currently. Uh, I fully expect us to have something pretty soon. We're working on it. They haven't announced it, but if I know ABI, like I know ABI, we're working on something. You trying to leave the states here? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any other questions for us? You know, if you're interested, just <coughs> want us to shout on one of our business cards and just mention the fact of who you are and you know where you came into play in this. Just in a little blurb of an email, if you attach a resume, we'll be glad to have you come in for an interview and then discuss what you're looking for and and branch it out. And if you are interested, I'll be more than happy to come to Maysville College or here if there's a group of you that's interested and we'll talk as a group. I mean, I'm open to that. And, and it's not only you. Uh, ABI is an aggressively growing company and always has been. We need good people constantly. So if you know friends, family, anybody that's looking for work, and if you think this might be what we explained to you today, something that would interest them, give them a note. And it doesn't necessarily have to even be in a culinary field. I mean, I have cashiers, I have servers, I have prep people that work in the back of the house and all they do is prep food all day long. They're not a sous chef or anything. I've got a general manager that works for me that went back to school after raising her family went back into the culinary world, got her culinary degree. She's 58 years old and she's managing one of my locations in, in Northern Kentucky, in Avery, Kentucky. There's nothing wrong with that. I mean, more power to them. We like, you know, the, the, the people that, that branch out. And because not only am I gonna get your culinary experience there, but I'm also gonna get your 30 years that you cook for your husband. You, got, you, you were probably a great cook. Yeah. <laughs> It helps us as useful in my chance. That's all we try it out and see if it could be helpful. We thank you for coming. So our next step is an email to you. Just an email, or if you want to go down and see Sharon in the cafe at the, at the, at the college, just tell her, hey, I need to get a hold of Chris. And she'll call me. I can come in. If, you, if you're looking for an interview or something along those lines, I'll just come back and we can sit and talk right out there in the cafe. Did you have a graduate? I graduate in May. Would you rather be after we graduate or it's totally up to you. I mean it's it's if you are looking for something to supplement while you're in college, or if you're looking for something to um, you want to wait until you graduate and, and then talk to us, it's just totally up to you. However you want to do it. Whatever works for you. Some people that go to college here may live up the double way close to what? Highland Heights, Kentucky. I don't know. I'm close to there. I'm yeah. in Rockingham. Yeah. So I mean, and, 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 and if you're just that short of a distance over to Northern Kentucky, you know, the same distance to drive to here, it's no problem. More than happy to talk. Whatever works for you guys. On the vending side, do you have a lot of vending turnover? I mean, do you have? Do you have, do you have I think it's 
it's more uh, as growth as it is turnover. As we're expanding, I mean, I'm just using the Hebron Ranch, for example. I took this ranch over two years ago, a little over now. And we were, we had uh, 76 accounts. As I told you earlier, I'm up to 135 accounts. So that's opportunity, that's growth, that creates openings, that creates positions for people. All positions, hourly, uh, salary, everything. So it's more of that. Turnover, a certain amount, like in any industry. Do all your drivers come out of here? I mean, do they all drop Do they all pick up trucks and lose No, I have some in the high that drive over. They're 45 minutes away. I have some, I'm right there by Lawrenceburg, Indiana. I have some that live in Indiana that drive over. So, I mean, it's, you know, I personally, to my branch, I drive an hour to work every day and home. I mean, that's not a big deal to me. I mean, that's I, that's and I'm the same way. And he's the same way. I live in Georgetown, Ohio because I like country living. That's just my life. I've lived in the country all my life. You know, DHL for me is an hour and 15 minutes away. Uh, I'll work for Frito-Lay. I've been delivering uh, out of the Hollywood PC for, yeah, it's all my right. My son works for Frito-Lay right now. General Mills is one of my locations okay. in Jacksonville. We've got to come out of two and a half hours. So are you in Frito Lane? Just go, you know. Huh? Out of here? Well, I've been, I've been working out for like delivering the board so and uh your Herb Line the facility, we actually have vending machines in there. What? So there's machines in there are ours. Oh are they? Yeah, I see I've seen the guys do it. I'll tell you what's funny is that when they come into our facility and put the Frito Lane products in our machines, like I mean, Isn't that funny? We can't get it out of the warehouse and put it in the machine. But you check in to see how big a customer ABI is for Frito Lane. Well, number one. <laughs> <laughs> Just so you know, I like to do that. It's impressive. It is. It is. We, I mean, the volume, some people, you know, you correlate to my third shift people that work or that work at third shift at DHL, most of those are kids, you know, to the age of 19, 20 to 25 years of age. They're young, strapping people because they're out there loading that cargo on those planes, man. That's, that's hard work. But they also go to the cafeteria. And believe it or not, we go through, you know, one case of french fries 30 times. We go through 30 cases of french fries a week. 900 pounds of french fries. We go through 300 pounds of chicken tenders. Can you imagine that fryer just gets nonstop, all night long. <laughs> Any other questions? You're in a, looks like you're in a good area. <laughs> we appreciate, we appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.